when this story broke yesterday, about 10 minutes after 5, we were in uh, what's called flood the zone mode. That's an old journalistic phrase for just grabbing as many people and, 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 and swallowing the story. It was happening in real time. And I know many of you were calling. Uh, we will get to all of you today. We got plenty of time. So let's uh, do that and uh, take some phone calls here, starting with Tiger in Virginia. Good afternoon. Hey, how are you doing? We're doing great. Thank you for calling. I'm doing all right. Um, yesterday was nuts, obviously, hearing about Coach Saban, honestly. Um, but I wanted to say this briefly as an LSU fan. Because, um, you know, 18 years practically, Nick Saban has been nothing but pain to LSU fans ever since he took the job at Alabama. Um, I mean, there are a few times we got, we got him, but most of the times been nothing but pain. But I just wanted to say also for Coach Saban, thanks for helping LSU have build a foundation at LSU that we're one of the top teams usually. Um, you know, Tiger, he he did, he sure did. Uh, you're exactly right. I mean, we, we a lot. Of, we talk so much about Alabama fans here, but there are a lot of other fans here who, while respecting Coach Saban immensely, are also glad he's gone. J.K. is up next. What's happening, fine ball? Doing great, J.K. How are you? Hey, man, I couldn't have started my 2024 20, off better. Alabama got sent home. Nick going to his new home. Uh, hey, I'm having a ball. But, Paul, you know what? Yesterday, man, for the last almost two hours, I thought I was listening to a wait. All Nick Saban doing is retiring. Y'all was pretending like he had died or something. Well, that's where, you, that's where, that's where J.K., done. you really don't understand the reality. Uh, Coach Saban's healthy, Paul, but, look, but if you're an Alabama fan – uh, unlike unlike the program you're a fan of, which hasn't won a national championship in m m many people's lifetime, it's a big loss. It it, it hurts, and, hey, and that's Paul. what you were hey, hearing Paul. yesterday from all the people that were calling in. Okay, I'm co hey, congratulations. He retired. Hey, Paul, but let, let let me talk. Please let me talk. Well, if you're going to say I've something that makes sense, you can talk. Otherwise, we'll go to somebody else. Oh, okay, all right, this is going to make sense. All I've been hearing about is coaching candidates. Noah Bell. And all the, the the usual that you know spot off lips, but what about Mike Loxley, Dion, D'Amico Ryan's? What about the enemy, Charlie Strong? What do I, what do all of those coaches have in common? Well, J.K., I, I don't know what don't most of those coaches Alabama. have in common. I think D'Amico Ryan is a great coach and has a big has a big game Saturday, so I, I seriously doubt he's giving any thought to it. Uh, Loxley is barely above five hundred. Uh, Charlie Strong's been fired from a couple of jobs. The enemy can't get a job. So uh, I don't know where you're going there, but you're not going anywhere that makes any sense. So thank you for the call. And uh, we'll talk to uh, Ken up next in Irondale. Good afternoon, Irondale, Alabama. Good afternoon, Paul. Um, I was wondering what your opinion is about the percentage of, of the chances that Steve Sarkeesian might be the next head coach at Alabama. Ken, I think he's certainly uh, someone that would be on a very short list. Uh, what what the conventional wisdom seems to be, and I'm just reacting to what I'm hearing, is that Coach Saban uh, gave Greg Byrne some names that he th thought would be very good choices and guaranteed Steve Sarkeesian would be on that list. That's nice to know. Um, I was a little concerned. In fact, I had hoped it, it, it actually made me feel sad when Steve Sarkeesian went to Texas because I, I knew that, you know, Nick was getting older and uh, sooner or later this day would come when he would retire. And I was hoping that um, perhaps uh, Steve Sarkeesian might stay out. But, but, but Ken, here, here's the thing you have, to be, you have to worry about for Sarkeesian. Uh, it came out today that Quinn Ewers is coming back. So he's got Quinn Ewers, who is an outstanding quarterback. He's got Arch Manning, who is projected to be in all everything. And he's got a very good team. He's already gotten to the playoffs. He's in the SEC now. Do you really uh, – do you benefit yourself by leaving a, a great school like Texas for an equally great school like Alabama – 
except in Texas, you are now the guy that has brought them back as opposed to re replacing and succeeding Nick Saban, who essentially retired the trophy. Yeah, it, it would be a miracle to get Star Steve Sarkeesian because he, you're right. He has brought Texas back. Uh, like they said, it's no longer a punchline. And the thing that worries that I find funny in that whole thing is they haven't even let Arch Manning play as far as I know. He's seen very little. Yeah, he's been in one time. game. I've been waiting for this call. Legend is next. Woo! Man, Paul, it's a sad, sad day of loss, brother. A sad day of loss. I ain't felt this bad since I lost my mama, man. This is horrible. I'm in friggin' shock. What is going on? The whole operation is falling apart, Paul. The whole operation, baby. Help me. Help me, Jesus. Help me. Oh, my God, Paul. Give me a word of wisdom, brother. Give me a word of wisdom. You know me, legend. I shoot straight. Dark days are ahead. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I thought you were my black hat brother, man. You're supposed to pick me up by the shoulder and tell me it's going to be all right. This is horrible, man. This is horrible, man. Paul, the greatest coach ever lived. Won't you agree? Yes, sir. Man, I'd just like to say to Coach Saban and Miss Terry, we love y'all. We appreciate you. Coach Saban, we was in the pit of hell. We was in the pit, baby. The devil was torturing us. And you came along and lifted us out of the pit of hell and raised us back to the mountaintop, baby. You are the greatest to ever do it. You are a legend. You are a goat. And let me say this to you, brother. Change your mind. Come back. Come back. <laughs> hey, hey, legend. I'm, let me pause you. I mean, somebody asked me that. They said, do you think he might come back tomorrow? Can you imagine? <laughs> break that it. Hold on. Legend, Legend, time. let me do this. At about the same time, break it. We have breaking news. Uh, Nick Saban has changed his mind. <laughs> <laughs> According to Chris Lowe. <laughs> celebrate. Celebrate. Like it's 1999. Change your mind, Nick. Come on back. There's time, baby. There's let's get time. that going. Change Come on. Let's, let's get let's get everybody to chant. Come back, Nick. Come back, Nick. Come back, Nick. We love you, dude. We ain't gonna make it without you, Nick. There's not another Nick Saban walking through that door. There's not One more year. Nick Saban. One more year, baby. You know, I'm really pissed. I love Nick, but I am really pissed that he didn't give us a year to celebrate him and cheer him and let him know how special he is to us. That really, I wish he had done that, man. I'm in bad shape, Paul. My brain is experiencing technical difficulties. Somebody asked me today, they said, what do you think about this legend? I said, man, I can't think in the box. I can't think outside the box. Hell, I think I don't even know where the damn box is anymore. I'm losing it. And let me say this to Greg Burns. I don't care who walks through that door. I, I hope it's I, – I really hope it's uh, it's Ryan's. I really do. The dude's a great coach. Come on home, dude. Mama's calling you. Come on home, D'Amico Ryan. Come on home, baby. Come on home. Come on home. But I'm going to tell you, Greg Burns, if it's Dabo Sweeney, I'm pouring gasoline on myself and setting myself on fire on the 50-yard line. You can guarantee it. If it's Dabo Sweeney, I'm pulling my arm off and taking that contract fracture and beating the hell out of myself. No damn Dabo. Do you hear me, Greg Burns? That's from the Alabama nation. Get it right. You'll be judged on this one right here, brother. You'll be judged on this one right here. Man, Paul, I, I don't know, brother. I don't know. Y'all pray for me. Pray for me. Help me, Jesus. Next. Change your mind, baby. Take your mind. We ain't going to make it without you. Nick and Legend has left the bill. Oh, my. Wow. Oh, man. I think we just need to pause for a second. We need to call the Archbishop for, for a, prayer, a prayer meeting. Yeah. Legend's not good. The man's whole, I mean, he, he's, he sleeps with Nick Saban, doesn't he? Had that fat head over his bed. Wow. Dominic is in Pittsburgh. Dominic, bring some levity to the program, please, my friend. 
Hi, Paul. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> My world First is coming off, apart. I like Legend. First off, I like Legend a lot more than I man. And I was calling to see what you thought about Saban. I am really mad that the best coach did not want to get one more natty, but I am super happy I got to see his last SEC championship in person. And after the game, I sent him a letter thanking him and the team for a great performance, and he replied with a signed picture. Did he I really? really blame Tell him, us about though, that, Dominic. So, uh, so what, what, what did you get back from him? Bull crap. Dominic, what did he send you? He So after the game, I sent him a letter thanking him and the team for a great performance. Right. And he sent me back a signed picture of him and the team. Oh, that is great. Uh, I can't really Dominic, I hate to ask you. Uh, Dominic, could you do me a favor? Yeah. Could you get one for me and Randy? Yeah, I got you. Don't worry, Paul. <laughs> all right, I can't really blame him. Though, just, I, I just feel weird that, that if I send Coach Saban a letter, I mean, I, somebody might see it and it would make me look like I'm too much of a fan. Can I say one more thing? Yeah, sure. I can't really blame him, though, having to deal with all this NIL bull crap Ooh. and kids not wanting to compete anymore. It I'm isn't like in a his year old but he will forever be the us. goat. Roll damn tide, Paul! <laughs> See you, buddy. You got it. Over and out, uh, Dominic. I mean, if, if, if you just landed here after a visit to Mars and said, which one, which one of those two were legend, the famous Feinbaum caller? It would have been Dominic. <laughs> Dominic is the new legend. Stacy is up next. Good afternoon. What's up, Paul Feinbaum? How you doing, man? Hey there. Yeah, yesterday was a hard day, Paul, but uh, I'm going to change subjects on what I want to talk about. I want to reference J.K., and I'm going to show you how big of a coward J.K. is. He mentioned the names Mike Loxley, D'Amico Ryan, Charlie Strong, and a couple of more people. Instead of just coming out saying, he asks you, what do they all have in common? Well, they're all black. They're all African-American. And so off of that list, if the person that I would, if Greg Barnes does not do this, he's doing the university a disjustice. If he does not reach out to D'Amico Ryan. Now, I'm not sure if D'Amico Ryan will want the job because he's in the NFL doing great. But let him tell you no, okay? Let, let, let the Stacey, Ryan tell uh, you Stacey, I have no. a feeling that that probably – has already happened or will happen. I mean, these things are not, we're not in a vacuum here. Everyone knows who D'Amico Ryan is, Ryan's is and how great he is. But he's also a guy that's never really been connected to Alabama since he left. Uh, we're gravitating to him because he's had an incredible year. Well, well, I mean, well, that's the same as uh, the, the guy at Washington did. You can say the same thing about well, of course. him. Well, that guy's won about seven championships before he, he got to Washington. Washington. Well, this is my thing. I think that D'Amico Ryan and Lane Kiffin should be considered. And, well, and by the way, Stacey, I'm and glad and you again, mentioned Kiff, uh, Kiffin because we really haven't talked about Kiffin. But Kiffin, no, Kiffin uh, I mean, there's nobody better in today's environment than Lane Kiffin as far as the portal and in, in terms of NIL. I mean, he's, he's turned Ole Miss into a winner, which, which takes great skill. He all, by the way, uh, Kiffin also turned down Auburn last year. That's right. That's right. He turned it down all for this very moment, I believe. You're probably right. Let's talk next to Larry from Alabama. Hey, Larry. What? What's up, Bob? Um, How are you? Oh, man. I'm, you know, it shocked me, but uh, I kind of felt, you know, I'm 75. So, you know, I can understand, you know, when you get to that age, man, you know, you think about a lot of things. And, uh, and uh, spending time with your family and all, but I think when he, I think the NIL did it. I really do, and uh, all the, the crap that goes with that stuff. But I think it's going to ruin college football myself. But I think Saban did the right thing for his family. I don't think he's going to stick his nose in the coach he hires. I think he's going to be on the sidelines, and he might have some points to make. But some of these people that are calling in with some crazy stuff, man, I don't know. But uh, it's kind of sad, but I get to watch another era of football for Bama, you know. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, here I'm 75 and officially going to a new thing with Bama. 
And it is. It's exciting in a way, but in a way, it's real sad, man. I had to drink some beers today. I didn't have no choice. Larry, um, when, when you tell us about hearing the news and how you I reacted just, in you real know, time. It just shocked me, man. I just thought, oh, my God, what am I going to do? You know, <laughs> what am I going to do? I ain't got saving, man. I ain't got him. You know, it hurts. It, it really does. When you, when you watch football, as long as I have, fine bomb. Yeah, you're talking 50 years, 60 years. More. So, Larry, let me ask you this, uh, because uh, I want you to compare, because I've been asked this today, but I'm, I'm, I'm really, even though I was there, I was, I'm the wrong person to ask. Um, how would you compare this to when you heard the news in 82 that Coach Bryant was stepping down? Uh, I, I would say Bryant was harder because of just how sad he looked, you know. I mean, and he did. You, you remember what he look, said? He I said, uh, think about this. He said, I'm a, uh, December 15th, 1982. He said, I'm a tired old man in a young yeah. man's game. And that's why I decided today to retire as the head football coach at the University of Alabama. He's, he was three years younger when he made that statement than Nick Saban today. Yeah. yeah. That, bro, I, I cried. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, when I got that photo of uh, Bryant, and uh, when he made that statement to sports at uh, the news, and I got the photo of him in his jacket now, and, and you can, and he made the statements. Uh, can I read it to you real quick? Of course, Larry. The statement he made. Yeah, if you don't mind. But it, it's a, a statement that he made. The, uh, and to see him with the tears in his eyes to break your heart. But when he was, this photo came from uh, from uh, Birmingham Post Herald. It says, there comes a time when you need to uh, hang, hang it up. Right. And that time has come yeah. for, for me. Uh, me as a head coach of uh, Alabama football. Hey, hey, Larry, uh, do you still have that member that article? Yeah, I got it in a uh, picture frame with this photo. Who who wrote that article? Birmingham Post Herald. Uh, Paul W. <laughs> Bear Bryant, and it says. Uh, uh, you wrote it, I guess. Of course I wrote it. Yeah. I know. I, mean, I was trying to, by yeah. the way, I was trying to quote from an article 41 years ago. I wish you had told me you had it. I mean, I did a fairly good job of quoting my own article, but I haven't read it in about 40 years. So uh, I didn't quite get it right. Yeah. I'm slipping. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I know, that's man, what everybody's that, saying. That was, Not as sharp as I used to I'll be. I'll tell you what, I'm going to leave this. When I leave here, I'll have this. Well, Larry, the, I, I have that uh, I have that special section at my house, and uh, I haven't read it in a long time. But I'm going I'm going to read it tonight because it is uh, it, it uh, that article is, uh, is the centerpiece of it. But we put out a special section of his funeral and everything about it, and it it, it was one of the craziest yeah. six weeks uh, that any of us have ever gone through. But th this is too. This is pretty crazy. Yeah, that's why I never lived to hate you. <laughs> Yeah, well, don't hate me too much, okay? All right, buddy. Love you, man. Let's check in next with David, who is up uh, in, in, down in Alabama. Hello, David. Hey, Paul. How you doing today, brother? Okay, brother. Good, good, good. Hey, I just wanted to uh, call in and chime in on this coaching search. I believe anybody that thinks that Greg Byrne is going to make this hire on his own has lost their mind. He had to ask Nick Saban his input and possibly who he wanted for his uh, successor. And I believe we're not going to have to wait 72 hours. I believe it could come as early as tonight or in the morning with Jimmy Sexton being in Tuscaloosa. Lane Kiffin's going to be the man. And if that's the case, I hope he please goes after Jeremy Pruitt for defensive coordinator. Well, Jeremy Thanks, Pruitt's not, not eligible to coach right now. So you, you can uh, let's check in with I-Man up next. What we got here 
is a failure to communicate. What we got here is a really, really big mess. I saw the Bammers at the at the at the at the water cooler day by the coffee pot, and they was crying. And I walked up and I said, "Should I bring chicken or tater salad come Sunday?" What, what what do you want me to bring? Chicken or tater salad? Because I know you feel so bad. They said, you so heartless. I said, I have no damn respect for you crying. Crying because he quit. He quit. He walked out on you. Well, it was probably NIL in the transfer portal. No, 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 no. It wasn't that. And and then you said, yes, there, Paul. I don't even know what a young 72 is. I mean, like you didn't know. You're the one that coined the phrase. He's a young 71. He's a young 72. And then you're going to act like you don't know. He quit. He said, you know, when are the fans going to realize they did the number one thing that he told them not to do when he got there? He said, don't speak to me. Don't speak to me. (laughs) You see me in the hallway. (laughs) You don't speak to me. He told everybody before the season started, this is a great honor and a pleasure to be here at this school with such history and tradition and to have coached here. He told you goodbye then. Then he told you Miss Terry said cuss them. Cuss them. <laughs> and, and then the players told the old players and the fans to kiss it. And then the fans booed him and his team in their house when he told them, don't you talk to me. Don't speak to me. The failure to communicate, oh, it's transfer portal. Is this NIL? He can't control it. No, you run him off. You booed him off. And then the team had the audacity to tell all y'all to kiss it, and you didn't even realize. Then he told you to kiss it, and you didn't even realize. Paul, I told you Tuesday, the little fella had on his walking shoes. And that's what he did. And, oh, I'm shocked. I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't, oh, what are we going to do now? You you know what? I have no mercy for you at all. All you Bama fans wringing your hands, pointing your fingers, talking all your smack, where are we today? Paul, should I bring tater salad for chicken? I like like tater tater salad, don't you? Good, good, fresh, dry tater salad. I don't like the mayonnaise in it. but you know what? I'm going to need Jesus to break some bread and fish because I can't feed all them damn bammers. I'm bringing two chicken legs, two thighs, and two wings, and four biscuits. That's it. War damn eagle, what a hell of a day in the SEC. Oh, and you know, we're going to go to that 12 team championship. We're going to be there every year. Hell, look at that schedule. You'll be lucky to win six. Look at the schedule. Why are you crying at the water cooler? What are we going to do? And who are you talking about getting? Lord have mercy. It flipped on a script overnight. You went from living in a mansion on the hilltop to a house full of cockroaches, rat poison. It's a really, really big deal. No compassion. War damn eagle. Have a good day. Lions is up next. Good afternoon, Lions. Hey, how are you doing, Paul? We are doing great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to talk about how the little brother, Auburn, Auburn Tigers, how they were rolling Toomer's corner over there after the firing or whatever with Nick Saban. That is, that is unreal. Well, that's just, listen, uh, there's not a fan base in America who didn't celebrate yesterday other than Alabama. Come on, be real. Daryl is up next. His fan base probably the celebrated more than Alabama. Alabama, Alabama, has, uh, uh, Alabama has owned your uh, team, Daryl. Oh, really? Has he? Well, let me say this, okay? Turn out the lights. The party is over. I wonder why Satan left, Paul. Was it the transfer portal? Hmm. Was it NIL? Hmm. Was it the fact that the the Bama hit the fan base that's, put, is, that's supposed to back him. Their expectations are just through the roof, and he was tired of them um, complaining and and trying to get his coaches fired. Was it that part? Was that it? Or was it Paul that he looked? He thought, you know what? 
I just barely beat Georgia and Kirby by three points. I got to play them again in nine months. Now will be the time to get out of here. I said when, when Kirby beat him, Paul, for a national title that Nick Saban would never play for another national title, and he's not going to, all right? And who they going to get? Lane, Lane, I can't win the big one, Kiffin. Is that who they going to get? No. Sars? No. Dan Lanning? No. Kirby Smart? That's a wish. No. They're not going to get none of the top four, Paul. You watch. Now, you know what? I feel sorry for the Bama fans that should have been Bama fans since Nick Saban's been the head coach that know nothing about the 18 years prior, but that's what they fix the guys. They are in for a rude awakening, okay? A rude awakening. Hey, Mr. Paul, y'all are like the man dead. The man ain't dead. The man living his life. He's 72 yeah, but, years old. Got mu- hey, let me ask huh? you a question, Dwayne. How did you? How did you feel when Saban left your team? Hey, I ain't felt nothing. I know, I know, I know, he, he, I ain't feel nothing. But look at this. It's over down there now. Hey, why you don't tell them people down there in Alabama is over? Ain't no more recruit going on going on down there. That elephant shot. Hey, you better hang that elephant on the wall now. Ain't no ain't nobody going down there gonna recruit like that man. Nobody ain't gonna them them boy ain't and another reason I think why he left is that woman said it she said the same thing, you say the same thing too. Because the NIL and the players, they don't stay long no more. They like to try and fur. They like to go. They like to go all over now. What you say? I think you're right, Dwayne. You, you, I, I don't know how, huh? to, how, to, how to compute this. You actually made sense for the first time in your career. Johnny B is up next. Hey, Paul. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you. I got a little, a little jingle here, and then I just had a little something I wanted to put in on the coaches thing. But uh, I got a little Dwight Yoakamish here on you. The system had robbed him of his coaching pride. So let's all give Saban a big roll tide. Hmm. Woo! We're going to send him out in style. Uh, earlier, you know, today, I was glad to hear that he and uh, Miss Terry, you know, they're healthy and all that, because I honestly thought that that might Yeah, you know, and, and I, I just had so many people check in with me who knew something that wasn't true, and I'm glad that everybody was wrong. Yeah, and, and then Topmeyer was doing good till his drink kicked in he said something about james franklin being the coach I yeah that, that, that was that was extremely disturbing <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that that greg bird would consider that guy hey uh but if you think about it you know you, we you talk about saban and belichick and you had the patriot way and it, at early on it was kind of called the saban way and then it became the process and i think one of the things that you you do is that that process works if you're in coaching or in business or in what but when you go to a coaching tree, oftentimes you've got people that were there with the greatest recruiter in history, and they benefited from being under Saban, and, and then these people think that they can do that, and they hire them, and then you've seen how many times that, that's failed. But with a guy like DeBoer, he's won at all levels, and he must have a process that works, and, you know, in my opinion, that's somebody that I think they ought to go after. To me, he'd be the top candidate. Well, I think he's a serious candidate, uh, and we, we should. One thing about this coaching search, it will not drag on. Uh, I fully expect someone in there by tomorrow, Saturday at the latest, maybe soon. I mean, there, there's no time to waste. And you know, Greg Byrne had, uh, however much of a heads up, uh, he already had a list. You make a few phone calls. This isn't like you have to go through. Uh, the Rolodex, uh, you call the agent, you go, what about this guy? Let's talk about that guy. What about this one? What about that one? It, it can be done very quickly and efficiently. Jacob is up next. Uh, hello, Jacob. How you doing? Oh, I got two separate questions. Um, how do you think it's going to affect the Paul Feinbaum show since most of it was built on Nick Saban dynasty after his retirement? And the uh, second question is um, – Mike Ray Rabel. Well, ain't nobody talking about him. Because there's no way he would get hired. Uh, good coach, but you don't bring somebody in that that just got fired uh, right up the street. Uh, he's likely to be under consideration in New England anyway, and I think that's where his future lies. As far as the Feinbaum show, we don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's it's it is correct to say that Nick Saban has been the uh, at the epicenter 
of this show's success back in the day. Uh, when we were in Birmingham, Saban lifted this program to a different level uh, because of the success. The reason I say that is that the show had been talking about so many losers before Saban got here. We built our reputation on, on people losing and getting fired, uh, not only for, for, uh, for, 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 for failing to win championships, but for all kinds of uh, scandals and tawdry action, and Saban changed all that. Suddenly we started celebrating winners, we started going to the national championship every year, and uh, the rest of the show changed. Give me something, I can't give. Try to take a red just so I can breathe.